Don't miss out on our new videos by subscribing Logic Heap and pressing the bell icon. Hello friends, in the last class we were discussing that we need to compare algorithms on the basis of time complexity. There we also saw that we need to compare for very large values of n. So we can ignore smaller values or smaller terms present in your time complexity. We were considering only the larger terms. So that is how we were comparing. From there only, let's start for the big O notation. Now what is big O notation? So before going to the theoretical definition of it, let's first uh, talk it verbally that what it is. So big O notation, if I say in a line, it acts as a classifier. All the time complexities that you have, it classifies it into certain boxes. Okay, what I mean is, suppose you have time complexity as 6n square plus 32n plus 97 or you have 83n square plus root n plus log n plus 1 or you have just n square or you have 7n square plus log n plus 33 any any time complexity is whose highest degree is a uh, 2 or it, it is having n square and all the terms are smaller than this let's put it all in a single box and call this box as big o this is the notation we use big o of n square okay so as we discussed in the last class, you can ignore smaller terms, even the multiplier uh, of n square, here it is 7, here it is 1, 83, 6, we don't consider it when we are just denoting it in terms of big O notation, we simply write big O of n square, okay. Similarly, all the elements having highest term as just n or the power as just 1, uh, suppose you have 6n plus 35, 6n plus root n plus 27, okay, or 25n plus log n, all these time complexities you can group together and simply call it as big O of n. Clear? So, don't consider these smaller terms, forget about the multiplier just consider about the highest term and we put it in a box all those functions uh, having the highest power is 2 or highest power is 1 of n we put it in one box either we call it as order of n square order of n then you have order of 2 power n all the time complexities typical time complexities that we discuss uh, we can denote it in terms of big O notation that is what big O notation is now it is making your things even simpler so suppose till now when we were seeing any for loop okay for let's say int i assigns 1 i less than equals to n i plus plus and some operation is happening over here we used to calculate it completely in terms of processor operations and we used to give a uh, time complexity. We used to calculate it completely. Now, in terms of big O notation, you will simply say it is big O of n. Right? You will not talk about the multiplier, you will not talk about the constants or the smaller terms. You will simply say big O of n. So, it is making your thing simpler. Next, if suppose you see a loop having one loop nested over the other, uh, so we will simply say big O of n square. If you see, if you see nested loop at three levels, you will say big O of n cube. So instead of doing the complete calculations, we just need to have the idea whether it is big O of n or whether it is big O of n square and that is what we require. So that's the reason we study about big O notation. It is making your things simpler. It's making your calculations fast. Um, you can quickly see how your processor operations growth is with the input size. Now this was about what is big O notation, but theoretically, let's see how we define it. Okay guys, so now let's understand big O notation formally. So this is its definition. It may look complex to you. Let's understand this with the example. Suppose fn is 6n square plus 35. At that time, do you remember just now we were talking, I said it belongs to big O of n square. Okay. So gn, 
big O of G of N. Whatever you are putting inside big O, I am denoting it by the function of G of N. So, G of N, I am trying to say is N square here. If I am saying that its complexity uh, or its big, in terms of big O notation, its big O of N square, it means G of N here. If we talk in this term, then G N is equals to N square. Why I said this? So, the reason being 6n square plus 35. If I find any multiplier of g of n, if I multiply anything in n square and it comes either equal or greater, always greater than 6n square plus 35, then I can say that it belongs to big O of n square. That is its definition. Now read it. Big O of g of n is equal to set of all those fn's such that there exists c and n0 such that fn is always less than or equals to c g of n okay you are multiplying something to g of n and it will always be greater than f of n okay in terms of graph it is something like this is your fn if then c g n is like the upper bound to it in that case you say fn belongs to big O of G of N. Okay. And initially for smaller terms, you may feel that Fn is coming bigger. But after a certain time, if it is always yielding the bigger result as compared to Fn, then it is big O of G of N. So that's why there's this thing where N is greater than N0. So maybe for smaller values, it may come smaller. But after n0, it should always be greater than or equal to f of n. Okay. So, here if we see this example, 6n square plus 35. Okay. It will always be less than or equal to 6n square plus 35n square. Can I say this? Right. Now, this is equals to 41n square. So, n square is your g of n. And 41 is your multiplier, right? So, C is equals to 41. And for N equals to 1, if you put it here, it is 6 plus 35, 41. And 41 N square. So, N if 1, it is 41. So, for N equals to 1, these are coming equal. But after 1, always 41 N square is going to be bigger. So, N0 is equals to 1. So, this is how, that's why I'm calling it to belong to big O of n square. Okay. So, that was the formal definition of big O notation. Okay, guys. Now, let's talk about the arithmetic of big O notation. We'll talk about addition and multiplication. Suppose you have two uh, time complexities mentioned in terms of big O notation. So, you have big O of f of n and big O of g of n. Now, if you add them, it is going to give you either big O of f of n or big O of g of n depending which one is big O. Okay, if f n is big O, it is going to give you big O of f of n, otherwise big O of g of n. For example, you have big O of n square, okay, first function f n is n square and big O of 1, okay. In this case, if you add these two time complexities, then it is going to give you big O of n square because n square is greater than 1. Similarly, in the second example, you have big O of n square and big O of 2 power n. If you are going to add these, it is going to give you big O of 2 power n because 2 power n is greater than n square. Okay, for this, remember the cheat sheet we discussed in the last class. And if you multiply big O of f of n and big O of g of n, it is going to give you big O of f n multiplied by g n. Okay. For example, you have big O of n square and big O of n. If you multiply, it is going to give you big O of n square into n means n q. Okay. Now, to understand this, see this example. You have these two declarations, constant amount of time. So, big O of 1 and again big O of 1. This is a single for loop. We have done this multiple times. It gives you results something in terms of n. So, uh, we can denote it by big O of n. Now, this is the nested loop. We have done this as well. It gives you big O of 
n square n into n big O of n square. If you had all these time complexities in terms of bigger notation, it is going to give you big O of 1 plus big O of 1 plus big O of n plus big O of n square. And the highest function here or the bigger function here is n square. So the result of this complete code is going to give you big O of n square. Okay, so this was about the arithmetic of bigger notation. Uh, that's it for today's class. Thank you.